You're watching La Chaine, the French language television network of the Ontario Educational Communications Authority. La Chaine programs are distributed via Annex Satellite to transmitters and cable operators all over Ontario. I hate it when parents go, are the comic books are getting too violent, or there's this message, or there's that, or do you think there's too much drug or violence? And I'm going, my God, do you remember when we were young and Bugs Bunny used to take a gun and blow Elmer Fudd's head off and it just turned black? I didn't want to run out and take a gun and blow somebody's head off because I didn't think it was going to blow their head off. As a six-year-old kid, I knew that it was a cartoon, for God's sake. Just a cartoon? And Super Mario is just a video game? And movies are just special effects? And books are just words? Well, that's not what the audience is thinking when they're watching the movie or playing the video game. Kids are not pushing the joystick around just to move some shapes on a screen. They're going bang, 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 bang. Bang. Why does that ring a bell, Nancy? Right. Ty Templeton. Ty's working on a new humorous comic called Bang. Ty, tis I. Why are comics so full of violence? It seems to be the most, it's the most basic way of, ex of introducing conflict into a story. If the conflict of the story is... Uh, you know, I'm trying to decide whether or not to leave my family, be, but I, I have this tremendous desire to run off with this other character. That's a real conflict. It's a sort of human conflict that people have. Um, but it takes way too much exposition and, and character to say that. Whereas if a guy comes up and says, Hey, you, get out of my way or I'll punch you in the head. And then he does. You've got conflict, which is basic to any story. So the conflicts in comic books, because you only have 22 pages to tell a story, are very basic. You ball your hand into a fist, you punch a guy, bang, conflict, magic. Well, I tend to think, in a way, that the, the action for me in the FF, really, in, well, in the comics I do mostly, is more along the roadrunner line of violence, where, in, or just animated violence, as in cartoons, where you'll have a lot of violence, but, but no one's permanently injured, no one's really hurt. In a way, it's like the, like the Avengers television series, I think, with... Uh, uh, Patrick Mead, Diana Rigg, where uh, characters were, well, they were bumped off wholesale in some of those episodes. I think I read an interview with McNee one time where he said they tried to get the feeling that they were bumped off, but you always know, after the cameras were turned away, they, they got up and walked away, they were okay, you know. In a sense, that's the kind of, that's the violence as drama that I'm looking for in the, in the work that I do, rather than violence is just for its own sake. It's a fine line, and, and I think sometimes you probably cross it unintentionally, but that's at least the direction I try to go. Sure will. I, I think the most meretricious thing about superhero comics is they pre present an attractive portrait of violence. We're talking about a genre in which people are forever punching each other through walls, in which cities are being blown up and nuked and, you know, deaths occur. It's not deaths, it's mega deaths. You know, you'd think with an attitude like that, Neil would be satirizing superheroes or crusading against them. But no, he's currently writing a Batman graphic novel. Batman's a different matter. Batman, I originally viewed... I saw 
it was like I'd seen Killing Joke and I'd seen Dark Knight. And I thought, wow, Batman is terrific. He is this infinitely tensile structure. You can load anything onto him and he'll take it. And then I saw the Batman movie and then I saw a book called Arkham Asylum. And I, I thought, no, he's not. And I went back to the outline of this Batman story that I had and I took out all the subtext and I took out the philo philosophy and I took out the sort of the, the, the interesting self-referential metafictional constructs that I put in there. And wherever any of this stuff occurred, um, I'd replace it by a scene where he thumped the living daylights out of somebody. Because I think this is what Batman is about. He's a guy in a bat suit who goes around hitting people. Um, I find this very interesting. I've never written a hitting people comic before. In my comics, people don't hit people. I get letters of complaint. Where is the hitting people? You know, um, if I had any enthusiasm for the character, it's dissipated long since. And yet, Neil is still writing Batman and Miracle Man. You see, this is the dichotomy. Do you mind, Nancy? Neil Gaiman has written violent stories in Sandman and Black Orchid. The first comic he ever wrote was called Violent Cases. Well, you don't have to hit people to have violence. I mean, you have all these people who say they hate violence. Comic book creators, and four-star generals, hockey team owners, and yet they make their living off it. I mean, how much do they really hate it? And it's not just superhero comics, it's all kinds of comics. Horror comics, westerns, war comics, science fiction comics, even humor comics. I know. Bill Sienkiewicz. He's drawn a lot of different styles of comic and his artwork's very aggressive. Bill, it's Commander Rick. Why is there so much violence in your artwork and in comic books in general? Does it, does it intrigue you? Does it scare you? Does it... Um, real actual violence is... Um, I don't find anything funny about it. Um, what's interesting in film and in comics, um, especially in comics, I mean, Sam Peckinpah glorified the violence, you know, or even not so much glorified it, but gave it a, an interesting uh, twist by slowing it down. Um, well, you can't get much slower with violence than to have a still image, you know, plastered across several pages. But well, I find that in most instances of, instances of violence, the actual violence happens like that. And it's the repercussions of it that take a long time. And there are some sometimes that, that recovery is, is uh, if not impossible, um, very difficult. And that's one of the elements of, of violence in comics that is uh, is not so much the real the real world. It's it's all extrapolation and hyperbole. It's just going for the uh, you know the zinger. The moment. You know, it's like here's a gun, here's a big gun, you know, here's a bullet hole, here's an exit wound the size of Minneapolis, you know? It's that kind of approach. Whereas um, And that scares you, that upsets you, that um all Oh, I get off on it, really, actually. No. <laughs> no, sorry, no. <laughs> strike that, strike that. Um, there's enough going on in the real world uh, that is wonderful and frightening and, and is high drama and melodrama and, uh, and the most opera operatic highs and the, and the, the lowest lows that uh, certain elements of violence can simply be um, homespun. And, the, and, and there's an element of poignancy to it as well. I don't think it really needs the trappings of, of spandex. Thanks, Bill. Obviously, superheroes aren't the most interesting genre to work in. Ty, you've worked in humor comics, funny animal comics, but you keep coming back to superheroes thrashing it out with supervillains. Why do these knights in nylon dominate the form? Unfortunately, comic shops pander towards comic fans. Comic fans are usually poorly socialized young men, and I know it's a sad thing to say, but it's kind of true. And poorly socialized young men love to read power fantasies about good-looking people who they aren't, uh, getting into, you know, really macho situations, which they never do, hanging out with large-breasted women, which they never get to, and, you know, basically live out that kind of fantasy. I don't think it's any secret, I don't think it's any uh, big uh, surprise that the way Superman becomes Superman is he takes off his clothes. I think that's one of the coolest things in the history of literature. You've got this schmuck who takes off his clothes and he's Superman, in other words, secretly, deep down where you can't see me, I'm Superman. And that's why that kind of power fantasy works beautifully for sort of poorly socialized teenage boys.